Hey guys, it's Carrie, and with me in the craft room today is Dale, the crafty husband. Hi there. And Oliver the crafty pup, I don't know where he is, but I'm oh, sure. oh, is he laying down? He'll he'll be back if he's if he goes in and out. So you'll hear those little clickety clack nails, right? Absolutely. Okay, well, we are here to welcome you into stamp class for April 2024. You're excited. Excited. I'm excited too. It's going to be fun. So if you registered for class, grab your packet. This is what it looks like. You've got four projects all prepped and ready to go for you. You want to set that up on the, yeah, there you go. That'll work. Just get it out of the way. So you've got everything prepped and ready to go for you. Um, we are going to be using the lighter than air suite of products. They're so fun. Uh, the paper is bright. The embellishments are super cute. Got a twine trio pack and a really cute stamp and die set. So I've had a couple people tell me this was not on their radar at all until we started making projects with it. We did use this for Finally Friday, our free online class, which is the first Friday of every month. Um, on Stamp with CT business page is where we do that video. And it's a free class that you can just come and see what we're up to and um, talk with us, chat with us. Let us know what you think about the project and the products. But that's where we used it for um, Finally Friday. We made a cute two-page layout, scrapbook layout. We'll show you that in just a little bit. But these products are super fun. And I've had a couple people tell me that now they're seeing them in action and they are falling in love with them too. This um, stamp die set we'll take a look at first. You have got lots of different options as far as coordinating with the stamp set. And this is a photopolymer set. Can you see, D, how many are in the 12, 12 stamps in this? So you've got a couple sentiments and then images to make all kinds of hot air balloons. You've got clouds. Um, you've got some sentiment pieces, just lots of options with the stamps and dies. And the cute little heart. Yes, there is a cute little heart. We can show that to you later. Um, then we've also got some embellishments that are the rainbow and very, very cute. The twine trio pack with, I think that's lemon lolly, flirty flamingo, and balmy blue. Yep. Um, of course, twine like this goes super well. You can use it with different yellows, pinks, and blues, but I think that those are the colors. That's what's part of the designer series paper. And then we've got the super cute designer series paper. It is a six by six stack. Let me see if I can get this to cooperate so you can see all of the different patterns. We're using a good bit of this paper today. And like I said, six by six. Lots of fun. We've got pool party, Azure afternoon, fresh freesia. What else can you think of, D? You can look lemon lolly. I guess that's it. Uh, Flirty flamingo. Petal pink. Did yeah, you say? petal pink. So lots of really cool colors, and um, we're gonna make some really cute projects with this. Give us just a second to organize some things, and we'll be right back with project number one. Okay, here is project number one. Telling y'all, so, so cute, so fun. So we are gonna get started with this little card. This is a top folding, not what I typically do, but I like to keep you guys on your toes. So in your packet, be sure that you pull out all of the little pieces when you go to get your packet out. Everything is included in your envelope. And we love that we can include an envelope for you as well. So you've got your card base, and this is Fresh Freesia. I'm going to go ahead, I think, Dee, you want to kind of organize that? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and put our inside panel in there. So even though this is a pretty light color... You know, I still like to put that inside panel. If you just want to write on the fresh freesia, then you can just save this piece of white for another project. I just like putting that in there. Getting us all organized. Mm -hmm. Trying to. We're going to do some stamping here in a minute. Oh, I'm struggling getting that straight, but 
think that's a little bit better. That's better. Okay, I'm gonna give this glue just a second to dry. And then this layer has been embossed for you. I'm trying to figure out, I guess really this is the best way for this. So we're going to be putting that right on front. Let me just remind myself, we put that on with dimensional. So you know, glue yeah, let's first. glue that on first. This paper is just so, so cute. And if you do not have this stamp set, for the most part, your die cutting has been done for you. So you'll be able to, did I go all the way over again? For the most part, you'll be able just to grab some sentiments from your stash and add them. Yeah, it is. Or I don't have it centered up well. That looks good. No, I've got it too far over. It is just a tiny bit long, but you know what? I don't think I'm going to worry about that. You? Nope. Okay, so now we're ready to put some dimensionals on the back. I grabbed a fresh sheet of dimensionals today when I started doing some crafting. I always love a fresh sheet of dimensionals. Keep them lined up, though. No, I'm not. I'm going to have to report you. Uh-oh. Don't report me to the dimensional police. You want to pull those off? Sure. And you can just glue that layer down if you want to. Just like that tone on tone layer like that with a little bit of dimension. Okay. Got them all. Okay. Trying to get that on there pretty straight. Looks good. Looks pretty good. Yes. Okay. Show a stamp? Yes, let's do it. Um, back behind here, I do have our mat. Okay. And I should have the stamp. There it is. We're using Azure Afternoon and Pecan Pie. Those are the two colors that we're stamping with today. Okay. So Azure Afternoon to stamp our sentiment. Move that balloon up out of the way. Okay. And we didn't cut any extras, so... No pressure. No pressure, right? <laughs> well, let's put it on the card first. <laughs> put some more pressure on it. Oh, absolutely. What we're going with. Okay, looks good, doesn't it? Let me close this up. Oh, we're going to live dangerous, too. No. How about we put some dimensionals on the back of this? Okay. So now we're just going to put that little focal image on, get our sentiment on. Doesn't take much to put this cute little card together. Mm -hmm. I guess we probably need to do the balloon first before we put our wish big sentiment on there, don't we? Okay. I'm just going to put a dot in the middle of the balloon. Okay. And then you tell me where you think you want it. Is that good? I think so. You know, every project being handmade is a little bit different. Spacing is just a little bit different. So I think that's good. Have our little basket. Uh, right here. Okay. Uh, let me put a small dimension underneath it. Okay. That sounds good. So it kind of stands put up. Mini. Put a mini. So if you watched our Finally Friday, you saw that um, we did that 12 by 12 scrapbook layout from... And we used pictures from a trip when we went to Hot Springs, Arkansas, and we just happened upon a balloon rally. rally, hot air balloon rally. So if you've never seen hot air balloons up close, they're oh, really, is. really cool. I got it. Oh, okay. 
and it was it was fun wasn't it it was fun so when i saw this set in the mini catalog i knew i had to have it i'm gonna go ahead and get this ready put our sentiment on We'll dab of blue. Try not to oh, yeah. <laughs> Or a big dab of glue. Mm -hmm. And then just um, put our sentiment down here. Now this one may be a little bit lower down because I think with the balloons a little bit lower down. I'm going to bring that towards me for just a second. Okay. How's that look before I press it down? Looks fantastic. And then we're just going to sprinkle on some clouds. Okay. I think we popped some of them up. Yeah, I think we glued some down, popped some up. You can kind of put them, especially since you put the glue in the center of the balloon, you could put uh, clouds back behind your balloon, in front of your balloon, whatever you like. Just we like it all. Yes, we, we like the clouds. That looks so cute. Let's do this one. There's a couple different sizes of cloud dye. I want to pop one up at least. Okay. okay. A couple different sizes of cloud dyes in this set. And a couple of minis. Mm -hmm. And we'll be done with this one, won't we? Mm -hmm. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. Need two minis? I uh, probably, probably didn't. <laughs> two is too many. One's not enough. There you go. Where are we putting him? Oh, uh, over the top of that. Out onto the balloon. Over to this side. Maybe right about there. Nope, he's too close to the edge, isn't he? Yeah. I don't like that right there. So we already have that one. I don't know. What about right, right underneath that one on top of the balloon? Okay. Go down the there. there you go. I like that. That looks cute. Okay. Okay. So that's how easy it is to make that little got part. We've got them. um to still put what did I do with my yellow? Twine. Oh, that's right here. Okay. I, I took it back. Okay. I took it back. You did? We'll make you want some how about some yellow ones on this one? Yeah, that's fine. Just make a quick little bow to add. Try that again. And if you've got the, the packet, then you do have a little bit of twine. I think we gave you actually a good bit of twine, but you can add a bow if you want to. You don't have to. Totally up to you. I could futz with that all day, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let you cut that off for me, Dee, and we'll add it to a blue dot. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting lined up right. No, well, he kind of it's kind of twisted. We can make it work though. It's coming untied. Oh, sorry. I like putting um, bows on with glue dots, whether they are twine or made from ribbon, because it really does help you get it positioned. And then once you stick that down, it tends to stay where you want it. Now, when you're working with twine, you can take your nail or you take your pick tool and kind of roll that glue dot up a little bit. So the adhesive is tucked underneath the twine. Okay. Oh, wow. That turned out cute, didn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's project number one. Let me get those out of the way and we'll work on the next one. Okay, we're ready for project number two. And this one, we're gonna do some stamping. Now, if you do not have this stamp set, you're still gonna be able to put your embellishments on, find a stamp from your collection. I think that would still look really cute, the little banner over the circle. Or you may have a kite in your collection, butterflies. What else can you think of, Dave, that would look cute? Just some cloud stamp, maybe. Love that. Hang in there if you have the little monkey step set. <laughs> <laughs> that would look cute too. So we're going to get started on this project. We've got an envelope full of supplies here. And again, we're going to make sure we've got everything out of our envelope. And we're going to need to cut this card base. So we purposely included that for you to cut. So we could talk just a little bit about when you're designing cards like this. Uh-uh, be good, Oliver. When you're designing cards like this, you want to kind of think about your measurements. So we're going to be cutting an inch and a quarter off the end, which will leave us four and a quarter by four and a quarter square that we're working with for focal image. So that makes it good to have a square that we can come in with four by four, either designer series paper or in this instance we're using pool party cardstock and then your layers can just keep coming down by quarter inch increments if you want to keep adding layers so it just makes it easier when you're cutting your supplies okay so let's bring this again top folding card over to one and a quarter on our trimmer and really it may be better to do it towards the right huh well i'm going to do it you're going to do it up at the top the that's top. fine because that's your one and it's the long mark after the one. So mm -hmm. one and a quarter. Move the scoring blade out of the way. All righty. And make sure it's butted up against this guard so that it's nice and straight. Okay. All right. And so then this little piece that you have left over. You can use that for some other project. I would definitely keep a scrap that's that size, wouldn't you? Absolutely. I don't know that I use the bone folder on that other card, Dean. So let's go ahead and reinforce this score line. I think that when Cheryl was packaging these, she did go ahead and use a bone folder some to get them nice and flat for shipping, but we'll still do that. So here we want to come in with a couple pieces. We're going to use this piece of designer series paper this little strip actually i think i'm going to put the glue right across here and i can get it to come out a little bit across the bottom to add our dsp oops i almost put the wrong side i need that back so i can put it in the card show So that's not only decorating the outside, but also the inside. And then we'll go ahead and adhere our inside panel. That glue's long. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so we want to make sure that that's at the bottom. And I don't know why I turn it upside down to put the inside panel, but that's just what I do. That's just my MO. Give that a minute to dry. So it's a little bit longer than an inch and a quarter. So that way, make sure no white is peeking out when we've got that closed. Love these colors, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Great. Okay. So I like to kind of build onto my layer and then add it to the card front. So we'll go ahead and do that. We've got a deckled circle. That's our focal image here. Okay. And then we've got, do we grab the stamps over there? Yes. We've got one we of the... the cinnamon stamp. Oh, we don't have okay. it out? Okay, we can get it. What's the matter? That's peeled us. Peeled what? The 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 stamp stuck together on the block oh. <laughs> and it peeled the the balloon off of the block. Uh oh. Well let me get the sentiment stamp out that we need. Hang in there. Uh, 
No, I bet this is it, isn't it? Yep. That's it. So I thought that was a cute sentiment to use. So do I need to put the the balloon stamp back on the block? No, it's, I got it. Did you lay it down on the surface and pick it up that way? No, I didn't. Okay. Let's talk about that for a minute then. Okay. So rather than, so what happened? We had two stamps and they got stuck together. So what you want to do with your photopolymer stamps is instead of putting it to the block, like placing it down on the block, you could possibly stretch it. So lay it down on your work surface, give it a second to return to its natural state, okay? So if I stretched it at all, if I pulled it, warmth of my hands, that type thing, now it's back where it needs to be. So now bring the block to the stamp. And the exception to that rule would be, in a little bit, we're going to use a sentiment that has a bit of a curve to it. Okay. And I wanted it more straight. So I purposely brought that stamp more straight. And I'll show that to you when we get to that part. All right. We ready? I think we're ready. Okay. So nope. we're going to stamp. I'll stamp the balloon. It's really, really cute. And I love that this one has room for you to put your banner. Now, we did find that you want to make sure you've inked up this stamp really well. And this is a pretty juicy stamp pad, so let's see where I want to get this balloon. Does that look okay? Looks good. Right about there. Put some pressure down to make sure that that ink transfers over to the paper. How'd we do? Did all right. Did okay. It's off kilter just a little bit, but that's okay. Those balloons go flying through the air, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> all right. Now so the, then we've got the base. Let me, let's go. Let's leave. Let's do the Azure because I need to stamp this. Uh, oh, true. Sentiment. Right, true. Right. Azure afternoon sentiment. You're getting way ahead of me. Close Sorry. This thing up. I get too excited. So hang in there is the sentiment we're using. And that would be a fun card to send for any number of reasons when someone's kind of going through a little bit of a struggle. There we hang go. Hang in there. Just a card of encouragement. Okay. And now... A little gondola on the bottom of the mm -hmm. basket. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take that stamp so you don't end up with ink. No, I got a, oh. I got, I got both stamps on it. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, okay. We like to live dangerous. You've got one stamp on the bottom and one on the top. Can you see through that okay? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, that, that can move that line a little bit. <laughs> My balloon's just a little bit wonky, but it's okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Put some dimensionals on. Where's our clouds? Right here. Um, I wanted to point out that we cut the clouds from Azure Afternoon, and mm -hmm. that was an idea that Cheryl had, and I just loved that. I thought that was so fun. Okay. Something different, right? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the minis on the back of these clouds again. Okay. Those are uh that's fine. What we glued this down and then we popped up the clouds. Then we popped up the banner. Okay. Okay. So let me glue this down. I like your idea of just a little bit. I don't know why I can't get the glue in the glue holder today. I like the idea of um, putting just a little bit of the glue in the center of that circle. And then 
kind of centered that up on the square. That look okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll pop our sentiment on. And there's the train, the obligatory train that we have to have in all videos, right? Oh, yeah. I'm glad we scheduled it right along, child. <laughs> I guess being what two blocks, block and a half from the railroad tracks, you're pretty much guaranteed to have trains getting well, through. We're actually there's three different railroad tracks that cross. <laughs> so I just it, thought the Azure afternoon clouds were super cute. They stick a little better if you take the backs off of them. Did you know go. that? Yeah. Did You knew that. I did. You aren't going to tell anybody? <laughs> well, I, I'm a, I obviously did not get the memo. That okay. To mention it'll stick better when you uh, take the uh, backs off of them. Isn't that cute? Okay. All right, I think now we are ready to add this layer. And you're going to put some little uh, embellishments on? Absolutely. Ready? I get those borders evened up. That's good. That looks good to you. We'll let that dry for just a second. Okay. I'm going to sprinkle right. on those little rainbow dots. Absolutely. I'm going to grab that ink pad out of the way. Why would you do that? I can't believe you do that to me. You're welcome. And in your packet, you got a strip of the dot. So you know, just use whichever ones you like. Cute. That's project number two. All right, we've got two more to go. Card number three is a little pocket card. It would probably work okay as a... Uh, Gift card holder. Not okay. It would be, it would work, work great. great. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so it's got just a little note card to leave a message. Okay. And that's what it says just a note to just lift you note. up. All right. And then this little card is a, do we got to trim this one? What? Or no, we got a piece we're going to glue on. No, we cut this for you. Okay. So again, we really started to think about what size we wanted to cut. So when you stop and think about a card front, it's four and a quarter wide, right? Yeah. We cut two inches off. Okay. So that way it would layer over oh. this. So what we did, and I've already begun gluing some of my strips on this two inch strip. I just cut a quarter inch off so that there would be a border all the way around. But that way you don't have any waste. You're going to uh, use everything. So really thinking about what we were doing when I designed this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for this piece, you want to set that one down and we'll go ahead and get started. You can get all the components out if you want to. Well, it's going to explode. Oh, okay. We got a lot in there. We got a lot in here. Okay. Got everything? We got everything out. Okay. So you've got your card base and it has been cut for you. Okay. And I don't remember. If I cut them down, I may have, I think I did. If not, then you want this piece, this piece to be five and a quarter by two inches, which it's going to be two inches, but it may need to be trimmed to five and a quarter. I think I did that for them. Okay. okay? So then what other pieces do we have here? We've got our card base and we're going to need to put some tear and tape to make the pocket. Okay. okay? You want to work on that? Not sure. And if you'll hand me the stamp and seal plus, there you go. That's the little. They've got lots of strips in their packet. Okay. 
and don't let me lose any pieces to our balloon okay, okay. so when you are putting your strips on this piece this is a great way to use up little scraps of designer series paper I always take my designer series paper, put it back in the little pocket in the envelope that it came in to begin with. You need help? No, I'm fine. Got it? I always do that so that I have all those little scraps. And so we actually cut these pieces for you. So they're six inches long. When you're gluing them on, start over to this left edge and just cover up the blue so that if you need some of this, you can cut it off and still use it. I think we gave you plenty, but just in case. So I'm going to take some Stampin' Seal Plus. I'm using my um, silicone craft sheet because I'm adding this Stampin' Seal Plus and I'm going all the way to the edge. Now, this is a lot of Stampin' Seal Plus, okay. but that's okay. You well, could use a little blue. Right it's a little bit over the edge and I'm good with that. Okay, okay. let me show you why. You can take your silicone craft sheet and bring that back over the edge. Okay. Okay. I just kind of butt it up against the edge of the silicone craft sheet and it helps get that back where I want it. But that way I won't have any of those little bits and pieces coming back up on me. And I can get my adhesive all the way to the edge. You can use liquid glue if you want to. Okay. Really, whatever adhesive you want to. But that's just how I did it. And then it's just a matter of what you like and putting your strips on. I like putting it in an angle like this. And you just bump them up against each other. And what's fun is you can actually even do this and die cut pieces out like sentiments. Oh, that piece is a... Yeah, that's not a very good piece. Not a very good piece, is it? But I think I'm still going to use it. Okay. It's not cut perfectly straight. It's not cut straight at all, is it? It's, well, just because it's cut on a bias. Yes. Just make sure and get all your strips on there. I think I want a skinnier strip. Down here. And then you're just going to be able to I haven't used these dots in a little while, have I? Nope. Use that one. Then you're just going to be able to trim off the excess. And that's what makes it so cute. I think I'm going to, can I have the snips for just a second? I'm going to get a little strip down here from um, somewhere up above. I'm not going to put that really large. Hmm, maybe this one would work well. That should bring me all the way to the bottom. So what's fun about this too is every card is going to look a little bit different and have different scraps. And then we're just going to trim it off. All right. When you, when you trim, do you like trimming with the snips? Or you like the the trimmer? I like to put it back in the trimmer, personally. Like, I would trim off the bottom. Okay. And then I would put it back in the trimmer. But okay. you can certainly just use your snips, too. What are we going to do? Right. Oh, goodness. I'll trim off the bottom, like you said, with the, with the snips. Okay. Oh, we got that. Okay. 
And then you can actually line it back up in the trimmer in that cutting groove. And just slice them up. Real close. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Give me just a second. Get these uh, snips out of the way. Yeah, so on the, the longer edge, if you start at one end of your strips, then you've got all the rest of that that you can utilize if you need it. I don't know. This just seems faster to me using the paper trimmer, but it's just whatever you prefer. Got it? See how fast it is? Mm -hmm. Wait till you turn that over. It is adorable. It's so cute. Got all your snips on the... Okay. It's so cute. Yes, it is. Okay, so before we adhere this down, I'm going to move my silicone craft sheet. And that makes it so easy when you're adhering something like this. If you don't have one of those, you need one, right? Well, oh, I didn't. You need us. I didn't feel the guarantee. Oh, okay. The silicone craft sheet? Oh, absolutely. I use mine for all kinds of things. I know. I actually did some coloring with some alcohol markers of flowers and got a lot of alcohol marker on one of the silicone craft sheets. It washed right off. It was awesome. Okay. So now what we're going to do is take um, some twine and I want to use the pink this time. And I'm going to decide, I really think I like the way the patterns are going this way. And I'm just going to wrap that around. Did you already glue our balloon together? No, I've been working on it. Oh, have you? Yeah, because I just put a little bit of glue across this top right here. Mm -hmm. And pop up the... And then I'm going to pop up the uh, roughly part. Yeah, I don't know what that's actually truly called, but we'll call it the roughly part, right? Mm-hmm. Some of those balloons have those little, uh, little roughly flat, you know, flat in the breeze. Mm-hmm. And uh, get him on there. I just know that was the first time when we were in hot springs. That was the first time I had ever been up close to a hot air balloon. I had no idea how massive they really are. And just beautiful. And it was fun when you could see all the colors of the, I guess that's fabric, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a. Parachute top fabric, mm -hmm. top top fabric that has the ripstop nylon in it. Uh, okay. That's just not working for me. See if you'll give it a try. But at night, when it's all lit up, oh wow. They were so, they were. so cool. Uh, okay. Hold on. Okay. I don't know I, why. I, I got, somehow the, the screen got twisted together. Okay. We're going to down here, and I'm going to make a mess out of everything. <laughs> uh, not more than I've already done. And I'm going to bring it down here, and we're going to try to. I'm just tying a knot. That's what I was trying to do. And my fingers just don't want to work. You get it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll see. How many people does it take to tie some twine? Well, At hopefully, least two. Hopefully, their their fingers are smaller than mine. <laughs> I think if you have little short fingers, this would probably work real well. But I do remember when I was a kid, I couldn't tie a knot to save money. Oh, really? Could not tie my shoes. Couldn't go to school because I couldn't tie my shoes. Oh. I had a hard time learning how to tie my shoes, too. 
And then when I finally learned how to time, I could only time when I had my eyes closed. Really? I never yeah. knew that. Yeah, I could only That's funny. I have to feel. It's not weird. It's not weird at all. <laughs> That's the way everybody learns how to tie is to have their eyes closed. Uh-huh. So I think I'm going to pop this up. What do you think? Well, sounds like a plan. Okay. So um, why don't you grab the stamp? Where did I put it? It's over here. Okay. Grab the stamp. And you can show them how that stamp has a little bit of a curve to it. One more. And put it over the top of this white paper so you can see that it curves a little yeah, bit. Because it's already kind of stained with Azure Afternoon, isn't it? Yeah. So it has a bit of a curve. So this is the exception where I say bring the stamp to the block so that you can kind of need one more dimensional. What? I know. I didn't really position these super well. There we go. Where do you want, where you want? Right about there. I'm just going in between um, yeah. on other side, either side of the twine. Stick him down a little bit and then kind of stretch him out just a tiny yeah, bit. Just make him straight, a little, a little straight to the, just because of where we're using it, we don't really necessarily want it to be curved. So we're putting it on the little note card at the top. So that's what I did. I just made sure. And the same thing happens when you use a sentiment that's straight. You can put a little curve to it if you want to. Mm. All right. I think we are ready. Okay. Put this guy on. And I like how you kind of um, spread out. Oh, that dimensional is too far down. I like how you kind of spread that twine out. Or did that just magically happen? I try to keep it apart. I thought you were going to say it was magic. It's always magic. No, I'm going to take I'm going to take credit for take credit. For yeah, it, I'm taking sure. credit. Oh yeah, I intended to do it. <laughs> How many times have you seen me do this? You know I'm going to take credit. Okay. There we go. All right. So we've got our cute little pocket. So that's where our card is going to go, but we still need to stamp. So let me grab our piercing mat okay. you've got the stamp and a little trick that i use you want to stamp sure a little trick that i like to use when i'm doing up oh, i put those dimensional backs on top of that ink pad didn't i confetti yeah. mm. i like to stamp it upside down to where it's close to me so i can get to the top of it but you do you yeah. is that what you're gonna do or no sure okay do your uh, people that watch your videos know about how nice of a confetti that they do make? Yes. LaDonna well, likes to um, include dimensional backs whenever she sends a card to Gail. I know that's for sure. That's uh -huh. kind of an ongoing joke. And then just up here in the corner? Mm-hmm. Upside down? Upside down. Mm -hmm. As sense. close as you can get to the to the right. Are they going to judge me on it? Oh, I could have done that a lot closer. Oh. I think it's fine. Don't you? Yeah. So that's what I like to do is turn that upside down. I just seem to do better. You did a great job. And now we're going to slide that in. And a little bit of our sentiment shows, but I was okay with that. Then we need to add our hot air balloon. And you may need to come down just a tiny bit, Belle, because when I cut these little cards to go inside, I accidentally cut the ones for the packets a tiny bit smaller than my original. Okay. So I just don't know that it's going to fit up like that one did. Still looks cute. Still love it. Okay. Gives us a little room for an embellishment maybe right there. So we can pop on a couple of embellishments if you want to. Still got them over there? Yeah, I got, got some here. Rainbow embellishments. Mm. What about... Uh, you can use any color you want because good. you've got so many of the colors from... Well, you've got most of the designer series papers from this pack. You're just going to sprinkle them on? Mm-hmm. 
no matter what. Okay. How about that? Okay, so here is a great way to use up some scraps with a little gift card holder. Perfect. All right, we've got one more to work on. You ready for another fun fold? Oh, absolutely. I do not know what this one is called, but it's a cute one. So it opens up. Isn't that cute? That is cute. I like this. Okay. So what's really neat is you've got a five and a half by four and a quarter card base. And then this piece, the basic white is scored so that it folds up. And then you've got that focal image. So this will still fit in a regular medium envelope, regular envelope like we typically use, but what a fun card. And then you can stand it up and display it if you want to. Okay. You've got the envelope full of supplies. Right here. Okay. Let's take a look at what we've got. I know we've got a lot in there. And again, make sure you've got all your little bits and pieces out. And I like to just dump it out and get organized. Okay. So we've got clouds, we've got layers, right? Mm -hmm. And what's fun, this is just one of the pieces of the designer series paper that we're gonna use as our focal image. Of course, you could stamp that if you wanted to and decorate things up, but we're just making it simple. So that's gonna layer up like that. We've got our card base. Um, we did have to fold this a bit to get it into the envelope. So you want to go ahead, D, and fold that on the score lines and get everything nice and burnished for us. And if you'll hand me the glue, I'll start to glue this together. Okay. And this is not a perfect square. Let me stop and really think about it before I get started. It's not a square, it's got just a tiny bit more on one side than the other. So be careful when you're adhering that. I look again, I don't know what this card is named. If you do, let me know. I got a swap and I don't even remember what supplies were used. It was not a hot air balloon card. Well, mm -mm, it wasn't. And so um, I just really liked the fold and thought it went really well with these products. If you know what this is called, please let us know. I know a lot of you like making fun fold cards. Okay. And it's always fun to give a little wow, isn't it? Uh -oh. Absolutely. I've got that on there wrong, don't I? After I said, be careful. I wasn't careful. Looks good. Looks very good. Okay. Then I'll quit messing All with right. it. I'm going to center this up. It centers up on your card base, yes. So I'm taking the big flat back. Mm-hmm. Doing, uh, you might want to put a little bit more than you normally would um, just because that's really kind of the mechanism of the card, isn't it? Because people with cards like this, you just can't help yourself. You just keep, you know. So since that has the movement to the card, yeah, exactly what Dale's doing. You want to make sure that you've got the same blue, same amount of blue on either side and this is balmy blue and azure afternoon that we're layering up for this and although this card looks a little bit complicated it's really not got it I so okay so we'll let that glue dry for just a second and so that's what you did was you um made sure that you had that all evened up, centered it up. Same thing with this. You're going to center up to where you've got a border all the way around, okay? And then we're just gonna adhere the one side. 
Okay. Okay. So, so you kind of put your finger where you want to make there. sure you don't put glue. Yes. Yeah, so I don't put too kind much glue. Kind of give you a little guide. So I can stay away from my finger. Mm -hmm. You're just gluing it to that one side. Okay. But you're making sure that you've got an even border all the way around. And with the blue and white, it makes it pretty easy to kind of visualize that. And it just frames that out, doesn't it? Yes, it, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Just kind of got to scooch it that way just a tiny bit. I like this too because I got this whole side over here. I can put my fingers in here and adjust it mm -hmm. and not get glue all over my fingers. <laughs> now I'm going to hold this for just a second and I want to um, bring in the mat so you can stamp for us, okay? okay. Stamp our sentiment. Okay. You're the designated stamper. I stamped a little bit today. Oh, yeah? I stamped the hot air balloon. Well, I haven't done any stampers. Oh, you haven't? Oh. No, I didn't. Ooh, that would look good, wouldn't it? What? Let's do that. What? That's going to be upside down. And that's the deckled rectangles that I used for the sentiment. And I love those because they nestle together. There you go. All righty. Put that over here on the okay. on the chamois. Close that up. And then we're just going to add a little bit of glue and layer that up. Okay. Get the mat out of the way. And because that closes down inside, you don't want to pop this up on this card. See what I mean? How that, Okay. you know, you don't want to add any more bulk. That's a good bit of bulk already, isn't it? Yeah. It'll still go through the mail. Yes, it will. And you know what? When it comes out the other side, it's going to be flat. Yes, it will. And so again, when you put your sentiment in, you're just going to adhere we'll part of it. Move yes, there the you way. go. Um, you want to make sure that you move over enough from the right that when it's closed, that that's not peeking through. So just double check yourself. Okay. Looks to be good. Okay. Don't move away. Don't move away. <laughs> You can use your finger method again. Okay. Excuse me. Well, it's been sick, but it's amazing what um, antibiotics can do in a matter of a couple days, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's toward the center? Uh, really, wherever you want to put it. I think mine is towards the center, but it could be up some, down some, whatever you want to do. We love options, don't we? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, I'll hold that. And we'll put some dimensionals on our clouds. Okay. So we've got a couple clouds to add. You want dimensionals on both or just one? Um, what do we do here? Just, just one? one? Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. Okay. And because the designer series paper is just so cute, and it's already got the hot air balloons. We just decided to do the clouds and be done with it. Some so. Okay. Oh, why don't you tell me a bow? Oh, sure. I did put a little bow on the inside. And then you'll notice that this twine is on a piece of cardstock. That is not how it comes from Stampin' Up. That's not. Right. No. But when you have a little puppy whoppy that finds some oh, pine. No, you're not going to say that. <laughs> Such a sweet little puppy would uh, never. Yeah. Never. Never chew mom's twine up. No, none of mom's crafting supplies. He would not. He would not chew up crafting supplies. Well, he did. So I had to get rid of the. Had to get rid of the little spool and 
put it onto some cardstock. So one. What about the stamp that you uh, demonstrated with it oh, on stage yeah. that time? A couple years ago, I did a presentation and had a stamp set that wasn't even introduced yet into the catalog. It could not be replaced, and Oliver, Oliver ate it. That was fun to tell. Tell the powers that be at Stampin' Up, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the stamps, and my dog ate it. My dog ate my homework. Mm -hmm. And on my bow there. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna snip it. Sure. <laughs> See how many fingers I can get. <laughs> you better not. Okay, glue dot. So we can add that and again use that little trick D where we scrunch it up okay. a bit. I'm not I'm not as good with my nails like you are. Oh, you're not? You can use your take your pick tool. You do a good job with take your pick tool. Yeah, that's getting all stringy. Yeah, it really is best um to use your take your pick tool when you're dealing with blue dots. I'm not stuck for take your pick. Because <laughs> the warmth from your hands. Just gets them all gooey, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And especially on this one, you want to make sure that it's okay. more of a little glue spot so that it won't adhere your card together so that that twine is over top of the glue dot. Is that good? That's good. Okay. I think all we have to do now... Oh, you've got the... We've got the clouds on there, so we just need to sprinkle a couple of embellishments on. All right. Finish this one up. This has been fun, hasn't it? Yeah. We haven't crafted together in a little while, in a couple of weeks. Mm. How about that? About what? How about one of those, uh, what is that? Flirty for me? Thing, Florida Flamingo. Probably. The pink one. Mm -hmm. I think it is Flirty Flamingo. Grab that little purple one right there. Is that Fresh Freesia? Mm hmm. It is. Okay. How about that? Okay. I like that one. Oh, here's the one we just made. I love that this one will stand up and it can be displayed. Okay, let me bring in the ones that we created today. You can kind of put them out there, D. Just a reminder. Uh oh, there's the other one. Get them all set out. And this time we made all of them. Nope, not nope. that one. <laughs> Normally, I do two and two. Two that are portrait and two that are landscape. But I didn't do that this time. Mixing it up. Keeping you on your toes, right? If we had turned this balloon right here sideways. That would have worked, wouldn't it? It would have worked. I love, too, um, that you guys always add your little spin. So we'll definitely have a post where you can show the projects that you've been working on recently. And if you create these projects... And put your spin, you know, use stamps from your collection. You can show off what you did. Okay, if you'll move those out of the way, Dee, I'm going to show this scrapbook layout right quick that we created for Finally Friday. And then we'll let them go. If you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to us. So this is the Up, Up, and Away scrapbook layout that we did. I love that Stampin' Up! products are also great for scrapbooking. Turned out cute, didn't it? Mm -hmm. We were so young. I'm trying to remember what year that was, but I really don't remember. So don't forget that you can use your scrapbook. You can use our products for scrapbooking as well. And we're going to be seeing more scrapbook products coming from Stampin' Up! in the coming months. Okay, anything else?
Well, that's all I got. All right. Let us know if you have any questions and we will talk with you soon. Thanks for being with us for stamp class.